She will. It ain't gonna be gold to me. It'd That's be cool. gold to us. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. It'd be gold to us. You jump on the podcast. Yeah. I will I keep it. Right at the camera and not at my laptop, which is down here. Don't right do it. it. I have to remember to do that. That's why we got this. That's why we got the screen, the TV pointed. Like I kind of got to look at myself, but I can look at you on the screen and still be in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Well, I can't. I got- if I look at you, I got to look. All this, is going to get, all, this is going, all this is going to get deleted anyway. So who said that? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe not. I, I don't Yo, delete. I don't delete a lot of stuff when I do the videos. I delete by feeling. If I feel like it's yeah. running weird, then I'll delete it. But other, if it's just yeah. conversation, then you know, especially if one of us is embarrassing ourselves or something like that. Oh yeah. Oh, I only trim out. I, I trim out very oh, little. I mean, I leave you it do to it, be as, it. as organic as possible. Yeah. When people are watching. Real shit, like. This gray streak I got going on right here, like you about I, to have a soul patch in the middle bro, of your chin. <laughs> like a gray streak. I'm I thought you said grave streak. A gray joint. I'm kind of hoping that it fully grows the fuck in. You can just have the you have the so storm I on your chin. Patch. You have a storm patch on your chin. Because Drake Drake messed me up the other day. We were talking and shit. The nigga, I'm talking about my patch. And this nigga like, oh yeah, I just got a gray hair the other day. And I'm like, <laughs> He said, nigga, I just like, got what a. type of lives are we living that I got? <laughs> he got A. I got one gray hair and it's long. And I don't, I'm not yeah, gonna that's the, it. Yo, that's yo, but this is a sign. Why of my wisdom. gray hairs be longer than my regular hairs, though? Like, especially on my chin. And my exactly. wife wanna pull it. Pink. Now nah, I got four more. You should uppercut her as soon as she does. That. <laughs> <laughs> Man, y'all see what happened to Kobe Chill. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. The, the the gray hair that I got put me in a put me in a mood where I'm like, okay, this gray hair kind of signifies everything that's going on in my life right now. It's like one more thing. Like for me at least, one more thing. I'm like, all right, this is official now. Okay, yeah, because bro, like the gray I, hairs is what made it official. No, nah, it's not the gray hair, dog. Like, you gotta understand. Well, like, how about the I'm pain? About to, I'm about to date this shit, but like bones. real shit. <laughs> my birthday's in a couple more days, dog. Like this Old 40 shit. shit is really how, how old you turning, buddy? 40. Old as shit. And okay. it's starting to set the fuck in. <laughs> Fucking asshole. No, it's not. It is how I set the fuck <laughs> in. Dog. About him. Oh, yeah. me? What I did. This nigga's gonna be 42. I don't know what he's laughing about. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, but I got time be before you. You got a couple of months, dog. That's all right. How many, how many months you got? Like, all right, I'm down to the All right. If we have months, if we had, if it was time to live or die, and 40 was the cutoff date. Oh yeah, my time be up. We'd be celebrating you right now for the for the next hey, couple weeks. Yo, oh, this is this is now starting to get very right? wild. <laughs> but no, but on, but on some real shit when you're comparing it to shit like that. I mean, I don't think I don't think it was like that back in the day, but now Days and time, forty is like the halfway mark, right? This yes. is the halfway, halfway this is mark. Why right? I'm at the, like that's why I'm at this whole. I'm at this point in my life, dog, where I got yes coming up to me, younger dudes coming up to me, calling me the old head OG type shit, and I'll be looking at them crazy like, yo, why the fuck are you calling me an old head and an OG? Because you're the shit. And then I ask them how old they are, and I'm like, yo, you only like three years older than my daughter. <laughs> Which yeah, is a bro. crazy statement. Yes. <laughs> Which, Absolutely. But I'm I'm working with some of these cats. So I've been there for my job. I've been at my job for a minute. So the shit is like like reality starting to set in like, yo, you're not you're not that no more. No. You know what I'm saying? You not you you're not in their bracket no more. You are literally over here. They are laughing I've, at the fact that you got gray hair in your beard. They are I've, laughing at the fact that you have a bald head. Why are they laughing? I feel like you're older than us. Even the, even though we're going to be 40 in the same year, you're still like six years older than me, 40. Because, well, Dre, what you got? Next year, you'll be 40? Mm-hmm. All right, so whatever. So, uh, but you're, you're, six year, you're like six years older than me and then seven years older than Dre because you were forced to have a more of a stronger responsibility at a younger age, which you know makes you have to deal with more in life. I was a little bit more free for 
another six years. I didn't have my daughter. T- shit, what was it, seven years? I didn't have my daughter till I was twenty six. Hmm. So yeah. I had a little time to to, but, but to free not, ball, if you want to say. That's not even the case, dog. Like out, like where I'm at, where I'm at, right? Real, <laughs> yo, real shit. You know where I'm saying? at Let right your now drop, is like, baby. <laughs> where I'm at right now, like yo, like the other day, my son was at the basketball. I took the kids to the park, so my son comes up to the park with the basketball. He's like, Dad, play me one on one. You were scared. Nah, which which son? Which the, son? Rah, rah. Okay. So I, you know, I, if it was your I older played, son, you'd be I, like, nah, I, I yo, your older my, son fuck around and dunk on you. Nah, I'll be him too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your older son fuck around and dunk, dunk on you. Dog. That nigga's almost the same height. No, he's not. Okay, Ron, he he, Ron, he, he Ron, will Ron, cross Ron, you. Him and Ron Ron are the same height. Nah, he gonna cross you and your legs will but be listen, done listen, done forever. Listen, listen, buddy. So I'm playing, I'm playing him, right? So... I'm doing everything, you know, driving on and hitting them with the fakes, hitting them with the hit them, hit a couple layups real quick. I only play. I'm like, son, I'm only playing the five. Like, yo, my because I got a bad my I messed my leg up, my right ankle. So I was like, I'm only going to play the five. So I do a couple of drives on them. Hit them with the I drive. I hit the drive on them. Go drive. I drive baseline on them. Boom. I pop. I stop. Hit them with the back spin. Spin off of them. He going the other way. I spin. Hit the hit the hit the shot. Boom, he scores on me. Now I'm getting nervous. He scores twice on me. I get nervous. Ooh. Like, we go with a five. Like, I can't lose it. My son, I say, you know How what? How many points you got at this? At I, this? I, I, hit, I, hit, I hit two layups, and then I hit the spin on them, and I went for a pull-up because I'm like, I'm winning three nothing. Like, I, I, I'm just going to pull up real quick. I pull up, brick the joint. He gets the rebound. <laughs> he drives on me. <laughs> scores. Hits me with a little step back, scores again. Mm. Now I'm like... All right, dad mode kicks in like, yo, you my son, you ain't beating me. Foul him. I ain't foul him. But these kids ain't used to like old school 90s defense hand checking where I could put my hand on your hip because that was legal when I was in school. Mm -hmm. I can put my hand without getting called a foul, put my hand on you and guide you. So I say, you know what? Fuck it. I put my hand, drove this nigga baseline, Got him to stop, pull up, pull up. I blocked this shit. I said, let me end this shit. Two quick layups. <laughs> Hit him. Dude, after we get done, my knees like, mm-hmm. my knee is rocking. My Achilles feel like it was about to fucking pop. Shit starts setting in. Come next day. I work, like, I work the next day. As I'm coming in the crib, should give out. My fucking you. knee just gives I, out. I almost <laughs> fall through the doorway. <laughs> Regular like, walking mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, what the fuck is wrong with you? I say, yo, my knee gave out. Now my knee is giving out the whole time. I'm like, what the you fuck? Definitely, you asked yourself the question and then answered it? Yeah. yeah you I, a I sick said, nigga. What? I said, well, fuck, what the fuck happened? <laughs> he asked the question. His knee answered it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I asked. I said, what the fuck? Don't my, know, I do I told him my knee bone. gave out. So I'm saying, what the fuck did I do? Why is the knee giving out? Dog, I just played basketball yesterday. I said, I ran a five. I said, yo, it was a fucking time. I run four games off, and in the fifth game, because I won four in a row, like, I'm going to lose this game because I'm getting tired, and I'm going to win the next three, and I'm going to go home. Which time we've ran ball six hours, seven hours straight Trace. outside. And I was still fat then, and I did it too. Hey, bro, so it set into me, like, between the old hair shit, the gray hairs, my daughter's 20. I mean, and then yeah, playing but ball, that's... my son is like, yo, you are old. Yeah, and I don't want to acknowledge the shit, though. That's I almost, don't want to acknowledge it. That's also us not taking care of our bodies throughout the time that we should have, we should be. Because, yeah. I mean, if there's plenty of people who's our age who are in shape who could still run ball and mm-hmm. do that shit, I mean, that just, that's just a part of us. Getting a little lazy during our years, but but yeah, it deteriorates. I mean, we not keeping ourselves in shape, and also just being content with the way that we live, and all that shit comes into form, and and mm-hmm. and then it starts looking like this. <laughs> you <laughs> know what I mean? And then, but it don't hit, bro. It hit me. Yeah, it hit me to the fact that it didn't hit you before. It never. And really, I'm not joking, bro. Well, don't forget, I, Kevin's I'm, been working out, and, and you know I'm what I mean, like he's hitting the gym and shit, so. Yeah, but he took that chance. Like, you know what? He, that's probably what he was thinking. He said, like, I'm going to play this little nigga. I, I got a little Dutch. something in me because I've been working. I've been doing shit. I'm oh. feeling good. And oh. then he got on the court and realized it's a different tempo. Listen, listen, just real quick. Real quick, I'm going to step in. And, I, and I'm going to add to it, and then I want you to continue. 
it's not about how strong you are right now. It's not about that. Because like even even me, right? Like I'm still hurting because I haven't I haven't deadlifted in like two weeks. And I just deadlifted for the first time like two days ago. And I'm still hurting. That's not the problem. The problem is your joints and your bones do not react the way they used to, no matter who you are, no matter if you're an athlete or not. It's a reason why LeBron played different. It's a reason why all the, it's a reason why Kobe before he um retired tore his Achilles like that. You get what I'm saying? Like your your yeah. muscles and your bones react differently now because of your age, no matter what. So you could be in shape all you want. Try to move. Try listen, the moves that you used to do, and I'm not going to do them on camera, but trying to stop yourself. I don't give a fuck yeah. how, many, how much muscle you got. Try to stop yourself the way you used to and watch your whole fucking leg give out and you possibly break your fucking or tear your fucking ACL or, or whatever like that. Your body isn't built to move like that like it was before anymore. Continue. Well, I, well, well I mean, I can't say that. No, well, it well, yeah, deteriorates, but at 40, we should yeah. be able to still move somewhat and not have to worry about walking. Name a forty year old oh, yeah, that, basketball course, name yes. a forty year old football player, basketball player. And those a, are these are I'm two, just these are uh, elite dudes. They're they not, not they may not be playing in the NBA, but I mean think about it. Jordan can, still balls. They can run and still, and still he play. Ball, he doesn't buddy. He, they, what they they still show him they playing. Can. He plays basketball to this day, not as intense, but I guarantee you he can go on the court, Look he'll at, play you, play hard, and when he goes Barkley. to walk around the next day, he'll be fine. Look! Look at Barkley. Look at Barkley. I'm just throw one. Barkley. Barkley yeah, was a Barkley was a fucking monster in the '93 Finals. He had a game where he had 42, and I think 20, 42 points and like 24 rebounds. Damn! You see Barkley jump on the court now, but he's not taking care. He, he I, wasn't taking, taking care of himself well, well, through I, through that. Uh, well, through I'm, not period, say, not I'm, not, I'm not going to say so much. Take care of myself or whatever. But far as like. I had to realize, well, fuck me up. I had to realize I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm 40. And it's fucking me up that I'm turning 40. We're talking about midlife crisis right now. This is midlife crisis we're talking to about. I'm in that state right now where I'm starting to realize, and I said this before, I'm realizing I am closer to the end than I am closer to the beginning. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I know... This is what's hit me about my midlife crisis. This was fucking me up about mine. I know in a couple of more years, next 10, 15 more years, mm -hmm. people that I was really, really close to, whether it be aunts and uncles, they are about to start passing. Yes. I'm down to, I'm down to on my mother's side, down to two great aunts. Down to two. Mm-hmm. I'm realizing, you know, my kids are getting bigger. They're they're getting into shit that can possibly, you know, alter their life. And I'm trying to change that shit. It's a lot of shit. It's everything is fucking with me. All this shit is like coming at me at once. Mm -hmm. Like I know on my 40th, I'm going to have fun. But I know after that, it's, the shit is going to hit me all at once. And it's starting to, the close I'm getting to my birthday is starting to fucking hit me. You, you know yeah. what I think? I think that you've been trained, all of us have been trained to like get to the point where you are now. Like your parents, people who you know, trained you to get to where you're at now. Nobody taught you what it was going to be like when you was 50, when you're when you turn 50. Like oh. you don't really know. Like I, I get it. We've seen people, but you it's it's almost like um, yo, go to work, you know, raise your kids and all that. Nobody tells you or prepares you properly, or you don't know how it's going to be when you have to, when your kids are grown out of the house and you just have to find out what to do with the rest of your life. You only got, if you're lucky, I guess, 13 more years of working, maybe 15 more years after that. After 15 years, nigga, like, what you about to do? What are yeah. you about to do? And all that, I mean, we hit you at once. <clears throat> we, we about to be 40 people retire, what, 60? Yeah, it's between no, 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 fifty no. and 60, sixty, about sixty-five. I mean, that's Which close. To well, it depends. It depends. Which is twenty-five on, on how, how on how long you've been working. If you've been working at a company since you were like 15, 20 years old, you leave them when you like six, sixty, fifty-five, something like that. 
Like, and, and, and I mean, regardless of the fact, we yeah. are more closer to a retiring age yes. than we are, you know, a hiring or or you know, beginning a career. It, yeah. it go another, it go another fucked up thing. Like I'm going on a cruise in a couple of weeks. My yeah. daughter's going with me, right? My daughter, my baby girl, she's going with me. I had to realize she can party with me. I think having a first family reunion cruise. No, 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 I'm saying she can party with me. She can drink with me. And she can get hit on by niggas. And you can't do nothing about it. I mean, you I can, can, but, can, but, but, but you're going to alter the relationship with her if you don't respect her boundaries because and, and, she's and, not and a go, no more. funny thing. They said Kiera was talking to some dude. My daughter. <laughs> drop her Sorry. Name. She was talking to some dude. So they ran the nigga name all to me. And somebody was like, yeah, is this dude such and such? So I'm asking around, like, who's this nigga? I look, this nigga got a full-grown kid. This is, And he's like 30-something. Mm. I said, I'm going to fuck this nigga up when I catch him. Are you, though? Luckily, it wasn't the dude in question. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't him. It was the wrong person. It was the his son. She, the person she's talking to is the person you go to college with. Okay. But okay. in my mind, I'm like, this nigga like 16 years. This nigga, this nigga was like older than he got. I'm like... Bro, I'm saying to myself, I'm ready to fuck this nigga up because I'm this nigga 30, 30 something years old, 34. He got do? a kid. Bro, I, what can I really do? Because I'm saying to myself, yeah. at 30, at 32, I was still fucking around with little 21, 22 year old Jones, like just screaming at him real quick. And it's like, that's, that's what's. It's that's what's fucking me up the most about this midlife crisis is my kids are getting so I have a daughter, which is my first, which is getting so grown like I'm it's fucking me up. I'm seeing people when I went to school with got grandkids. Yep. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it's a possibility I can be a grandfather any day of the week. I mean, keep it, honest. <laughs> keep it 100 with you. Being forty years old and you ain't a grandfather. That's it's, it's a now blessing. nowadays. That's a fucking milestone. Yo, you want to comp- Yo, that's an <laughs> yeah, accomplishment. That's, bro. A, that's an accomplishment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm about to be forty and my oldest is thirteen. So, so you got a you got a minute, but I'm saying when that shit, please that will let fuck, it be a minute. That will fuck me up if I got a kid calling me pop pop. Yeah, but it will fuck we're, me well, up because it be like, we're, yo, we're, I'm, we're not calling, young, right? I'm not this young. I'm not this young. Paul, Paul, he <laughs> call me Paul. Paul. He call me <laughs> like I call my pop 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 pop. They call me pop pop. Let me. It let will me. fuck me up, but it's like it's it's. It, I don't know, man. It's like that's where I'm at right now. My my head is fucking with me. It's like I don't want to recognize that I'm about to be this age. Let yeah. me let me let me give you the definition, the true definition from what Google tells me of midlife crisis, and see if it. See if it's what you're describing. Okay. Midlife crisis takes place between approximately between the ages of 40 and 60, give or take a few years. One common belief about this stage of life is that you should expect to face inner turmoil about your identity, life choices, and mortality. I go through that on a constant basis. Put a name on that bullet, dog. It's a midlife crisis. I'm going through that as well. Yeah, especially when it comes to, um, you know, where you are financially, uh, relationship wise, where you feel like you should be um, not having that financial freedom to do not say what you what you want, but some things you can't do. And it's stuff that you need to do. You know, what I mean, like having to sacrifice one thing for another is is. Shouldn't be like that, right? You know what I mean? We should be able to, to at this point, be at some some point of a comfort zone and not be scrambling around. But, I mean, even though we all live how we live, we, we, we've attained stuff that we, we wanted. It's still, it feels like there's something that's always missing. Like, yo, I'm not supposed to be doing this right now, going through this. Like, Sometimes it's like a like this is a dream like I'm in hell because of whatever I did in my past life or or I've I've had a past life and I can feel like, yo, I I was worth much more than I was previously. You know, what I mean, like, why am I here doing this? Why is the struggle constant? You know what I'm saying? And it, and it's not just financially. It could be relationships with the people that you deal with and love with the most. It's it could be your job. It could be 
it could be anything yourself, especially like I give a perfect example. I'm, I'm the shroom head of the three and I like to take shrooms because it kind of, it kind of settles me after a, especially a long stressful week. And it gives me a sort of a breakdown in myself where I, I look at myself and I know Nigga, I know what I am. I'm not shit. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that towards myself. If I sit and look in the mirror, I know looking at myself that there, there, is, an, there is no aspect of me that I'm comfortable with at all. You know what I mean? Whether it's the relationship with my kids or the relationship that I'm in or the women that I dealt with that I have to deal with on a daily basis that are the mother of my kids or my own mom or my brothers or whomever. I know that I don't have attachable relationships with the exception like you and Dre and the people I do it on a normal basis. I don't have these attachable relationships that make me feel like I've, I've like I've accomplished what I need to accomplish as a man, father, brother, uncle, whomever, you know what I'm saying? So when I look at myself in the mirror, I know that there's nothing going on good besides me having to focus on what I can do the next day to try to make things better. And that shit just blows your shit completely. You know what I mean? And nobody really kind of sees what a person goes through because which when you deal with them on a normal basis, you deal with who they are at the moment. You know what I mean? But when a person has to sit back and reflect on themselves and actually know who they are, nigga, that blows your shit, breaks your shit mentally, physically stops momentum the whole nine there's plenty of shit that i want to do with myself whether it's becoming more healthier or trying to figure out how i can uh attain these relationships and be able to keep them but it's hard for me to break past a point because i'm stuck at wherever i'm stuck at which keeps a depression fucking flourishing and you just are just stuck it's like You can't fucking open the door to walk through or even walk through the door when it's open. This shit is fucking nuts. So, I mean, I don't know how else to explain it for myself. I don't know how you guys look at scenarios and and, and, and within your midlife crisis and, you know, view yourself and what you go through. But that's pretty much where I'm at on a day to day basis mentally. And I, 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 I normally try for like a weekend or something like that on a, at a nighttime where I'm alone, where I can, I'll do some shrooms or something like that. And I'll just mellow myself out. And sometimes I cry. Sometimes I don't sometimes, but every night when it's a shroom night and I look in the mirror, I know exactly what is wrong with me. And it, and, and it seems like I just can't fix it no matter what motivation I try to use to fucking break that threshold. It just doesn't work. I'm going to give you a piece of advice somebody gave us. I want to get her back on her. She has to come back. Yeah. <clears throat> she has to come back and you have to talk. You really seriously have to talk to her. Because where you at, I mean, right, where you at right now, dog, I was there about 10 years ago where I was, I was well, literally. I'm there, but go ahead. I was literally s- staring in the mirror. Staring, just sitting in the mirror, <sighs> looking at the mirror. And saying, who the fuck is that person? Literally, like, who the fuck is this person? Like, I don't recognize what I'm looking at in the mirror. Like, this is not Kevin. I couldn't break it, shake it, or kick the funk off of me. Couldn't get rid of it. Then the nigga hit, which what we call, I think I hit a legit hit rock bottom. Legit hit it. I mean, I hit it. That was contemplating suicide. That's facts. Legit hit rock bottom because that's where I was at. I was thinking about ending it all. I hit that point. And, and when I hit that point, something said there's no other, other way to go but up. Stop blaming everybody around you. Stop blaming yourself. Stop. Cut the negative shit out. When a problem comes up, See what caused that problem. Try to meet it head on. Get over it. Hurt, you know. Deal with it as deal with them one at one at a time as they fucking come, and eventually you'll break. Because there's been points where I ain't have a fucking dime to my fucking name, and I said, "How I'm gonna pay this bill?" 
And I said, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this check I get next week. I'm going to put a little bit on this bill. I'm going to have enough to get some gas money, enough to get some eat, get something to eat. I'm going to keep doing this. All right, it's paid the fuck off. That stress is off my head. What can I do to avoid that, to get that point again? Keep doing what you keep doing the same steps you was just doing. Keep paying that little, putting that little look, that little bit away you've been putting away for weeks at a time. So when that bill comes up again, you got the full amount and it's not stressing you again. Something my relationship. All right, this is the problems in my relationship. Let me fix these little bit of aspects, fix the little shit that that, that I feels those a problem. Okay, I fixed most of this shit. It's still a problem. It's something deeper than that. Let's get to the deeper root of the problem. You know what? Real reality, we're not meant for the beef. We're not meant to be with each other. And there's no need for me to keep stressing or making this try to work when it's not going to ever work. So let me cut this out of my life. Let this person go be happy. Let me go be happy. You got to find your happiness, man. You got to wall the bullshit. I was there, but I just had to take it a step at a time. I, what you seem like you're trying to do, cuz, is take on the entire world has to come at you all at once and you can only win one battle at a time that's that's how that shit feels though like i know to, and i'm not you know i'm not piling on or i'm not even saying that i know the answer to anything but i can relate to a lot of what, what kev was saying because i'm like you you can try right like i'm i have a, I have a bad habit of trying to like if it doesn't and it sounds Everything, the answer to these questions sounds simple unless you're a person that's kind of dealing with it. So what I'm saying is, okay, I have a problem concentrating. So you might do these exercises to concentrate or something like that and give it a month and the shit don't get better. And you're like, what the fuck? All right. It comes a time where those things that you see wrong in yourself just stack on top of each other, stack on top of each other, stack on top of each other over and over and over. Now you're trying to fix it all, even though the the regular advice is to now you got to break it down one by one and attack it one by one. No, all this shit is happening right now, though, regardless of how long it took for the shit to get like this. It's happening right now. My weight is out of control. Mm -hmm. You know, and I try hard. They can't nobody beat my work ethic. Well, maybe people can beat my work ethic on that, but like I'm I'm doing a lot. I'm doing a lot, right? Um, you know, financially, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And it's like every you're trying to keep a million plates in the air the best way you can, but also trying to be better yourself in those areas. And it seems impossible. And then you get the courage, or not courage, but you get the um the gumption to you know, go on the road to make yourself better, like get in the gym, fucking start dieting. And I know you're not supposed to expect results fast. But when you feel like you're not getting any results, yep. the shit fucking, it, if you let it, it could fucking destroy you. For real, for real. It could fucking, it just makes you feel like, you know, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. I, I, that's, that's why I say, that's how I, that's how I know I hit rock bottom because like my whole outlook and life changed. I think I, what made me change my outlook on life when I hit rock bottom was like, yo, you really gonna end yourself and all these people gonna miss you? Like, there's a lot of other I, people I, worse off than you. I like, tell you this, figure that shit out, bro. That's that's not. It is. It is. It's it not what, and that's not even what I think about that's when it's funny. when it when I went through. My situation, it's, I never thought about who would miss me or none of that because in, in reality, like life will continue to go on. You know what I'm saying? Like people going to miss you, yeah, but it is what it is. But it's the tiredness of your situations and going through them. It's, you've been dealing with this shit for so long and you can't find no way out. And you're at this point where, it's just complete darkness. And no matter what you say to yourself, like, yeah, my kids are going to miss me or my parents are going to miss me, but it doesn't matter. There's there's a there's an ultimate point of selfishness. That is like, so. Like, you really don't care. 
it could be it could it's just tiring bro it's just tiring dealing with the same shit and then and then there is no way out even though somebody well you could do this you could do that but bro, you don't really know what a person could do because you're not living their life you don't really know every aspect of every single thing that they go through like physical shit is just one thing yeah you could work out Everything you have to sacrifice something in order for you to attain something else. If you're especially if you're in a situation where you feel like like, yo, you're just tired of everything in order for one thing to get better. Something else has to get worse. That's just how it is. You know, what I mean, if you if you if you work more hours, you're losing a relationship with somebody. If you're at work all the time because you got to 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 afford things there's someone that you're not seeing and 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 building a relationship with there's something that you're not doing because you're not there if you're not working then you're not making the money to do this you know what i'm saying it's it's a give or take with every scenario in order for you to 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 get your health back you got to eat what you want eat eat what not what you want but what makes you healthier and then you got to go to the gym and then you got to do this you got there's time being taken from one slot to put in another slot how do you determine what's the most valuable to you if everything in that one uh, scenario has significant value? Exactly. Let me, let me, Overwhelmed. In the, that's that's in, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm what I'm I'm answer. This is how I came out of my shit. This is this is me personally. How I came out of my shit when I was at that point, I'm ready to be selfish and end it all. I thought about the one the one constant that fucking needs me above all else in in in. And will love me continuously no matter my situation, whether I'm homeless, fat, overweight. It's my kids. So I honed in on them and I said, what do they need from me? All right. They need my time. Try to give time to them. They need me. Give me some. I need my they need some financial uh, financial shit from me. I've given it to that. If that affected other relationships along the way of me giving them everything I needed, which kept me alive in myself, people got cut. The, I cut a lot of shit out, cut the fat off. I had to focus on I, you got to focus on something and you're going to lose shit along the way. And you got to realize when you're losing this shit along the way, maybe that shit was dead fucking weight to begin with. You just never seen that that way because you was trying to save this and say you can't save everybody. You go on the airplane. What's the first thing they tell you when the plane goes down? Worry about yourself. Put your own mask on. Put your mask on before you can save because you can't save nobody else unless you save yourself first. Mm -hmm. So first thing you got to do is put your fucking mask on. Put your mask on first. The plane's going down. Put your mask on first. Now, what's the next important thing mask you're supposed to put on it? Is it these families over here? Is your girlfriend or is your kids? If the plane was going down and you had to choose between your mom, your girl, and your kids, who you gonna throw on first? Yeah, but probably but, your kids. But the weight, but the weight, and you it's a good scenario. It's it's but you're thinking of instant, instant scenarios that you're saving a situation right then and there. There's stuff that you that you can't save instantly. Everything, a lot of the things that's in your life is over time. Thank you. Whatever. Uh, you can put it up there. A lot of them is 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 over time. Um, so you have to be able to juggle whatever you're juggling throughout that situation, and and a lot of the shit can be dire to you. I'm not talking about you having money to go out with your friends or you want to buy shit or you want to sleep a little longer because you've been. T- I'm talking about real shit. You got bills due, multiple bills, the light bill due, your rent due, your car note due. You got to pay your car note because that's how you get to and from work. You know what I'm saying? You got family sick. Your kids is on some shit or something happened with your kids. You know what I mean? Whatever the case, there could be multiple things being thrown at you. It's not like you it's not like you you batting and you getting per pitch. You get a chance to swing at each It's scenarios where you're going to have to deal with all of this shit at once. And still deal with yourself. You, you, yeah. you know what gets me now is uh, and what I find myself saying is. And, and, and just hear me out here for a little bit is st- getting wins right that's really what i'm what i think 
can turn certain things around for me. Once I start getting what I consider to be wins, I feel like you can stack wins or it gives you enough confidence that you can continue to win. It sounds, it sounds, uh, I'm not going to say silly, but it sounds like bullshit. But for me, it's the truth. It could be little things like maybe getting the job that you want. You know what I mean? It, it, all it takes is that one thing to start getting shit moving in your direction. Cause that's really all you want. All you want is for shit to start kind of working in your favor a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's what happens. You get in this funk where you feel like, ah, you know, I try not to say this ever. Um, cause I'm a true believer and you know, like, you know, just not falling into it. Um, I just want things to go my way a little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's really what we get. And, and I think once you get to like 40, if you felt like you've been into that, in, in that mode for a long time, that's what gets you. It's like, God damn it, why yeah. can't things just start going my motherfucking way? And then you fall into it. If you let yourself, you fall into it more than you really need to, you know, rather than figuring out how to get yourself out of that point. So that's 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 my take on on what's going on, at least in my life. You just kind of want more things to go your way a little bit. That's all. I'm just I'm just glad I hit it then then now. Like I hit that where y'all is probably at right now. I hit that shit. You ain't had no midlife crisis oh. then. You were just in a crisis. No, I yeah, that's that, ten years ago. I, was just, I, I wasn't okay, even thirty yet. Yeah, that's different. Like, which no, I, I, I know, saying, I know you have similarities, but what we're talking about is different things. Bro, like I, you were in a bad situation and you figured out how to get yourself no, out of no, there. No, that's no, great. No, 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 no. But I, it's different. I, 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 I just turned thirty. <laughs> I turned thirty, which I didn't have a birthday party. I turned thirty. Turned 30, I had, was in the process, my hair, I was losing my hair. I was getting gray hair. Like, I was. I get you. I, said, I was like, I should be further along than this. I get it. You know what I'm saying? That part of my midlife crisis, I hit a little earlier. Like, right now where I'm at in my midlife crisis is the point you would say mortality. Okay. Mortality is setting in for me. It's like. I ain't got much more time left. I got, if I'm lucky, if everything heavens align, I maybe got another 50 years in me. Maybe, maybe 40. But reality, 30 if I live the right way, 25 of them not. You get what I'm saying? I'm seeing niggas drop now at 55. And that's if, that's if. You yeah. don't get a fucking yeah. magical disease in exactly. your body. Exactly. I seen a nigga. I'm seeing niggas drop at fifty. You know what I mean? I like high blood pressure. Shit just appears in you nowadays. You know what I mean? Like, goodness gracious! It's, it's yo it's with the insane. shit that the, <laughs> the shit that yo yeah. When you start thinking about it, like, and and go ahead, Captain. Bring down. We <laughs> we, <laughs> but no, for real. Like we we looked at it when we were younger. Like damn, like when we were. 18, 19, when you was 40, you was old. You know what I mean? That's why people call us old heads now. And and we started seeing that then, like people getting sick, people passing away at, at those ages. And we were like, man, that's crazy. But now we look at that shit and be like, yo, we there. And yeah. people that we know are passing from shit that can ultimately be us one day. You know what I mean? And the thought of that when it crosses your mind is like, yo, what the fuck? Like, all right, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And I'm already I'm running to the finish line. Like, I'm not just taking a quick lap around and shit. I'm running to the finish line because that's what it feels like. You know what I mean? When your knees is buckling from you playing basketball two days ago, you coming in from work and your knees fall out, you about to fall through your door Play or react. some regular walking shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like you that's that's the stuff that goes, man. I am f about to be 40, and the way that my back feels on a normal basis, what sometimes it feels like my legs are trying to detach from my waist so they can leave the top half behind because they're tired <laughs> of the bullshit that they're going through. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll be looking at it like yo. Yo, I feel like remember when uh when Carl Winslow on Family Matters bent over, he couldn't get the fuck back up. Oh, he was going to dance with way going to dance and shit. I've been there. I've no, had to, to lay on the couch, wife. nigga. Yeah, I like... had, I've had to have my wife help me like <laughs> feel right, come too. On. Yeah, like push push me back up. I got to straighten out. I don't know what just happened right here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what? I am about um, to be 40 and that's the stuff that's happening. You got to figure out how to how to 
you can't do anything about it. I'm I'm sorry, and it sounds crazy. Well, well, well. Certain things on your back, not you, but certain things on your back, you can do something about. Because I'm gonna tell you, you was there when I had my first uh, sciatic issue. Mm -hmm. Um, we gonna make this the old man podcast real quick. Um, so Kev was there when I had my first sciatic issue. All I did was get out of the car. Mm. That's it. I literally just went get out of the car, and I said, "Damn." fucking back is what the fuck is going on i thought it was just some shit that would go away in a day it didn't i went to the i went to the doctor for it and they had to get like that shit was real and then i had problems like that for a couple years actually once i started actually doing back exercises thank god it got way better it got way better so there's certain things you can do but the point is say if i just lived my life i would have back issues probably for the rest of my life for the rest of my fucking life, bro. And this only time I ain't got back issues is when I'm when I'm doing the nasty. It's like my back, <laughs> my back at that point is like, you know what? I got you for these 30 minutes. You good. 30 minutes. Well, Yo, well, I mean, bro, I you mean, the man, bro. When it, when it activates, it's like it's a 30 minute time <laughs> interval. Even if I only have sex for 15 minutes, I get a little 15 well, minute 15. boost after. Yeah. I get the 15 minute boost after. Like my back is like, all right, cool. Go That's take that shower, man. son. You know what I mean? He said a strong dad. I got a strong <laughs> Nah, man. I mean, I ain't gonna be. I'm not gonna be old in that area. Fuck that. But listen, it, it could be worse. You get about midlife crisis. Like we look good for our age and shit. You know what I mean? Like I got a picture of this nigga. He was 36. He's a Boston legend. But he was 36 in this picture. Who? That nigga look like he fucking. <laughs> that nigga look like he lived all of our lives. <laughs> what the fuck? Thirty six in that picture, man. Yeah, thirty six in that picture. You could be that. It could be. We, what's that? That. What's that? The eighties. That's, that's Sam Jones right there, man. The Boston legend, Sam Jones, right there. He was thirty six in that picture, man. Who the hell is what? Dick Raphael? Yeah, I don't know who Dick Raphael is. That's who took the picture. That's Sam Jones right there. <laughs> yo, a nigga credited himself. <laughs> like, yo, I took this picture of this old looking thing. Nah, you can be it could be worse. Like, like I can say that about being 40. I don't I feel 40. I tapped my knee the other day. I hit my knee on something. That shit ached for about four days straight. Mm. Four days straight. I kept feeling my knee hurting. Like I just hit my knee Monday. Why is this shit still hurting this fucking Thursday? Like, God damn it, please go somewhere. Like, bones I just hit you Monday. Brittle, Your yeah. bones are more brittle. These are science. This is science, man. It's crazy, man. Your bones are more brittle. Your muscles are more uh uh more susceptible to to you know tearing or or whatever mm. the fuck happens. Your joints are deteriorating. Oh, it's my just knee is shot. Oh, my knee is yeah. shot. Yeah, you you have no um, what is it? No cartilage left in your on knee. My, on my right knee, yeah. Yeah, yeah you there's literally nothing you can do about that. Hitting motherfuckers with roundhouses for years, kid. That, 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 that's it's gonna what, happen. That's what I'm saying. I'm a I'm a, eight, I'm a car from like we're like like cars. You you see a car, you got to replace parts at a, at a certain time. You know the battery, then the trans maybe the trans transmission, the engine. Once the engine go, the car is done. The <laughs> engine is our heart. This is a eight, this is a 1983 model. I'm an 83 model. Shit start to go out here, you know and I'm you, saying, here's what I'm gonna say though: you're better off as a person at our age because I want to start giving us some solutions to this shit too. I don't want us to do a "woe is me" podcast. The fucking solution to that, you, you're not gonna be able to prevent everything, but you could prevent some things by taking care of your body starting now. Oh, yeah. no matter who you are, you could prevent most things by. You know what I mean? Some shit is freak accidents. Listen, I was the most athletic that I possibly could be at 18 years old. And somebody dared me to jump over a hurdle and I <laughs> did it full fucking speed and broke the only bone I've ever broken in my body. That was the first time I broke a bone in the last time. Broke my uh, broke my femur. Most athletic I've ever... Shit happens. Where you gonna break shit? Shit happens. Or you gonna tear shit. But the more you you work on those parts, like I said, with my back issue, the more you at least train your body to be able to deal with those things, the better off you will be. Your muscles might be able to withstand certain certain pressure so that your bones won't break more than, 
you know, more than if you didn't do anything and your bones or your muscles just atrophied. You know what I'm saying? So there's things we can do to prevent certain things. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, I, listen, bitch. I, I still I need look a, like I need a physical training. I still like I still look like um it's a bunch of the ball head. I still Pro look bono. like I'm like 30, maybe 34. <laughs> nah, 34. Listen, I look like I'm 34. I see motherfuckers that's popping always pills, been shit. popping pills and drinking and shit. Them niggas look like they in their fifties. I mean, I mean, I'm blessed to not look like I'm going to be 40. Yeah. I mean, it that, but well, the outside don't mean shit. I mean, it do, but it don't because it means a lot. It, <laughs> not, I mean, if you like, listen, man, if you good. with the person that you plan on being with. For the rest of your life, she ain't with you because of your looks. I mean, yeah, not at this point. Like y'all together because it's more than just your <laughs> looks. Nigga. You, you gotta, you gotta, you got her the way you were, or you you got her the way you used to be, and then you're this, and she's still with you. Then you know, what I mean, it is what it is. But everything that affects you is normally the shit on the inside. You know what I mean? So we were blessed to be like, we ain't have to worry about the outside. I mean, you just kind of groom it, you know what I mean? For the most part. And I mean, me, I got to form it back to a shape, preferably not a circle or a fucking donut, but, but, but I form myself back into a shape. Yeah. I like, I like, man, I like the, I like the like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love it. Donuts are delicious. Let me serious out for two seconds, just so we can get some good content uh, other than, the, the couple things y'all did, because uh, those are definitely going to be clips. I do think that once you hit 40, you are the sum total. Well, any stage of your life, you are the sum total of the habits that you have, good or bad, or the decisions that you make. Yeah. And I think that once you get to a certain point in your life, for Kev, it might have been 30. And I want to apologize, Kev, because when we was telling you that you were going through something different, once you start saying certain... First of all, I can never tell you what you went through, so... But once you started kind of breaking down some of the issues, I'm like, damn. Yeah, that might have been your that might have been your midlife crisis. Yeah, because it's like shit. You was going through some shit that a lot of us might have went through later on. Like and I did say he was absolutely correct. Six, six, seven years older than us. So pretty much. Yeah. So it's like, yo, you I can't tell you your 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 journey. But yeah, I apologize for that. Um, But I think that once you get to a certain point whatever it is, you start to realize you start to be self-aware of that. And I think that's really what it is. You just kind of go into being more self-aware and saying, oh shit, eating donuts every day. I'm speaking for myself, eating donuts all the time or, or not going to the gym, not being as consistent as I should be, or even yo, not showing affection to my wife like I should have oh shit, that shit got me right here. And if you're not happy with where you are, it weighs on you a whole lot more rather than a person like, no, I'm still, I'm still chomping at the bit. Like Jay-Z is not going to say, oh shit, why have I gotten myself to this point? He's going to say, I'm doing pretty good, but I can always do fucking better. Like it's going to, it's going to fuel that hunger. And for, for me, I think that I always use this. Um, I always use this. Uh, whatever the fuck you call it when you compare shit to shit. Analogy. Analogy. I want to get into a point where I can sprint. This is what I mean. Physically or 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 metaphorically. Metaphorically. Okay. Where I can sprint. Because I want to get to a point like, where I can sprint like physically. But go ahead. Well, that too. I've done, <laughs> I've done that recently. Uh, um, you're trying. But yeah. But um, not yet. You get to a point where, like, you might work at your job, like a regular job. It's like, well, you don't want to sprint there, sprint, because where is it going to lead you? Where is it going to take you? Mm. You're just going to make somebody else more money. And this is, I'm speaking from, from my standpoint. You're going to make somebody else more money. You're gonna, you're gonna do your job so well that, you know, you don't, you don't get a, um, what do you call it, a, a raise or a fucking, or or a fucking promotion because the person on top of you gets looked at for how well you're doing. Like there's no reason to sprint, but put yourself in a position where you're doing the the type of work that you want to do and how hard you work is directly related to you. Like you get what I'm saying? Or you have your own business. You're going to want to go as hard as you can for as long as you can. That's what I mean by sprint. So these, these are things that I think about for on a day to day. 
I, I don't know if I wrapped that up quite as well as I should have, but no, nah, nah, you did. I just think the midlife crisis y'all going through. I like, like how you say y'all. I appreciate it. Thank you. All of us, but all of us, I I think it's it's time. We thought we had an infinite amounts of time at, in our twenties, and now that we're in our thirties and forties, we're realizing we wasted a lot of time chasing bullshit when we should have been, you know, what I mean, really focusing in on our goals and shit. That's where we at. But not only just that, but yeah, it's age. just it's just. It's much more. It's so much more that I want to do that I can't do. And and it's all around the board. It's yeah. more that I want to do for my kids. It's more that I want to do with my parents. It's more that I feel I need from them wisdom wise. It's more that I want to be able to buy. So I want to be able to to make more money, but I don't want to do the things that but then I got to do to get to that point. Like, like Dre said, I don't want to have to make some work my ass off. So somebody else can get what I deserve. You know what I mean? And then, and we, at, at the point of what you said, our time is, we have so very little of it, especially now managing it is the hardest point. Like, yeah, I want to spend time with my family, but I also want to be able to do this. I want to be able to travel, but I can't because I got to work so much to get there. So when am I going to have the time? You know, what I mean, it's 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 all time slowing everything down. Yeah. You know, what I mean, That's what I'm saying. so progress this- wise, while it's moving at a fucking at a rate that you can't get. I mean, you can never get time back, but you can't yeah. even manage it properly enough for yourself to be like, yo, I want to do these things and just do it because you feel as though you just can't do it at this point. Because think about it, we're, we're forty right now. If we would have did, ever, I'm about to be forty. It's twenty <laughs> years, say twenty twenty years ago, twenty years ago, if we wasn't. I'm just saying, twenty years ago, we wasn't out there chasing these women, and we wasn't out there partying and drinking and smoking but we was out there 20 years ago focusing on like say hey let me start my business now where i'm 19 20 my business would be my business would have been so much farther ahead 20 years ago i would have started my business yeah i would have struggled but guess what i was living at my mom's house at the time i didn't have no car no i really didn't have a car no to worry about i didn't have no bills i didn't have no kids it was just me if i had put all that energy and time and money into starting my business 20 years ago, 20 years today at present, I'll be so much further ahead. I can do what I want. By now, my business be running where I got employees running it for me. I'm just coming in there to manage shit to make sure it's still running at the way it's supposed to be running. I'm collecting my money from it. I'm going on these vacations, taking these cruises. Now we're at 40 is like, you want to start a business, but you like, yo, man, I don't think I got 20 more years left in me to even benefit from this business I'm about to start up. Like, 20 more years, I could be gone, and I, you know, this is going to benefit my kids. That's where I would look at it now. If I would start something, it's like, I'm putting something in for my kids to enjoy. It's not so much me. Yeah, Like, I'm, I'm putting them on the right track now for them to enjoy this. Like, mm-hmm. I squandered off my time let me not squander off theirs 20 years from now say my son is inheriting my business he's been working with me since day one like we wasn't making no money now back then but now it's like he's the head of something he owns something this is his now if you fuck this up that i just handed to you that's on you then you're gonna look back so that's where i'm at with my whole midlife crisis it maybe i did fuck up my first couple of years. That's why I'm so hard on my kids as far as education and where I want them to be in life. Because it's like, you know what? Let me get y'all a couple of steps headed ahead of where I was at. My mom didn't graduate high school. I graduated really? for her. No, my mom had my mom had me and had to drop out of high school. Hmm. So when I went and got my diploma, it's really I got it from my mom more than anything. <clears throat> I said I'm going to graduate. From, I'm going to graduate from my mother. I didn't go to college because I started working because I had Kier early. So I told Kier, I put in her head, be selfish. Don't have no kids. Go to college. Always be selfish. Because once you have kids, you can't be selfish no more. Be selfish. Be very, very selfish. Don't worry about nobody but yourself. 
accomplish it for yourself that you want to do. Do a job you love. So that's the things I got to put into my kids. So my time is wasted. Like I had my midlife crisis. I'm at the gym. I'm dealing with mortality. Now it was like, let me put my time, my energy into my kids. Like I'm somewhat in a good situation. Let me figure this shit out. It's it's yo, and and not to get off topic a little bit, but that shit it it it's it's different for us as a culture than it is for any other culture. Because right. my grandparents had to fucking bust their ass for my parents to live a good life. And they were, I feel as though my grandparents raised them to when you're kids, you be kids. And then they some off, they went to college. They, my, my, my family was figuring out their life. Like my, I feel like my father and, and my aunt and my uncle, they were figuring, they got a chance to figure out their life later. So we were being raised by our grandparents, you know what I'm saying? Who was instilling some of the same stuff that they were, they were taught, yo, you just got to just go to school and, and and get good grades and figure stuff out. Whereas other other families that weren't in the same culture as us, their parents were already established. So it's like, yo, go to college and don't do nothing but school. I'm going to take care of everything. Mm. We didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? We, we didn't have, yo, you're, you're just completely good to just I mean, not to say that that it wasn't there for for us like, yeah, yeah. Like we had a chance to go to school and do stuff like that, but there was so much that we wanted that we were like, yo, we got to go get it for ourselves if we want this because they were taught that the values of getting this is, is you know what I mean? Cool. Like what we wanted wasn't a value to them. But that's what I do for my daughter now. My exactly. Daughter, my daughter don't, mm-hmm. my daughter, and exactly. Her, my daughter got my car. She gave, I gave her my car. Trying to change the curve a little yeah, bit. You she, know what I'm saying? Called, and not to say that we didn't get stuff from our, our parents and grandparents and they didn't raise us well enough like that. Our opportunities, I feel as though were completely different. You know what I mean? Which puts you in a point of despair at a younger age. Have to work harder makes makes it the struggle less easy to to deal with. You exactly. know what I mean? That we get to a point like this more within our culture than anywhere else. You know what I mean? In America anyway. And this shit it just is just a cycle between no, nah, that's why I'm breaking between, I'm trying to break it, Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's just I'm a cycle that, that just cycle no more. fuck that cycle. I I got kind of three things that are off subject. So the first being I don't know who, you know, I don't know if anybody told y'all that, but both of y'all, y'all have really well behaved good kids. I don't know if anybody told y'all that. Yeah. Y'all got some good kids. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you're doing like both of y'all, I see y'all doing the work to break that anyway. Even if y'all had y'all missteps. Y'all kids have learned from what you're doing and they live a better life because of it also. You know what I'm saying? Even if they didn't learn directly, they're living that better life. Like, I'm amazed to see what y'all kids are doing. You know what I'm saying? Um, So that's one. Number two, as uh, Kev was talking, he was making some good points, and I thought about somebody that I haven't thought about for years. We didn't really know each other like that, though. And maybe y'all don't know him, uh, but we went, I went to school with him, and I always thought he was a, um, an interesting guy. Y'all, y'all know uh, John Webb? Yeah. He's he, went to, he went to Edgewood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was he graduated the year I graduated. We didn't know yeah. each other like that. He was just cool. You know what I thought was interesting about that guy? What that nigga, you knew that nigga was gonna be a doctor because he's a doctor. He was gonna be a doctor from back then. Do you know that? I didn't know John Webb like that. I just I don't know. I, don't know I, I know a different John Webb. I trained at, I used to train light skin MMA. John, right? Yeah, I used I'm train MM, light MMA skin John, John and definitely not MMA John. Yeah, the fuck would I be talking about that John for? I don't know him. I do. I do. John, <laughs> that's why I said John. His name is Jonathan Webb, but he owns his own gym um, and, and Washington. Well, he's shit. he's great too. We knew he was going to uh, kick Kevin ass from when we was in fucking eleventh grade. But I'm serious. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> the point being is that <clears throat> some people, man, I don't know what it is because I don't know what his parents did. I don't know. Maybe his parents was doctors or something like that. But this man got straight A's. Um, straight A's played for the football team, like was like six four or some shit like that. Like, just boom, it was always like you know, what I'm saying it was always like right there for him. And then I know people like my cousin Antoine, you know, what I'm saying 
I'm gonna give I'm gonna give him I'm gonna give him some praise today. Antoine went through like the he went through he went through life hard early. You know what I'm saying? I'll let him tell his story if he ever wants to tell his story. Childhood was definitely not like mine. You know what I'm saying? Like I had a good childhood compared to him. You know what I'm saying? We I'm not gonna get into that. Had kids at heck, got married had, and got had kids at like fucking like 1920. Like it was early, you know what I'm saying? Like early, early, early. Yeah. And he had to then go back to school. He was working that, you know, he was a technician like I was. Had to go back to school for fucking years. And he's a engineer now. He's married to his second wife. He still has the same two boys. And they're getting ready to go to college. They're doing college visits and shit now. And he's living a certain life. You know what I'm saying? And and you go through different shit in life, though. But it doesn't mean you can never turn it around. That's really what I was trying to say with all this shit. That doesn't mean you yeah. can't turn it around at any time and work your ass off and start creating some wins for yourself to get to that next level. You know what I'm saying? So I just thought that was an interesting thing that I, you know, I always thought that that John Webb was very interesting as to, and it might not have been easy for that guy, never saying it was, wow. but to like have, to me, it was like the road was paved. Like he knew where he was going and I admire that. He knew where he was going back then. Yeah. I admire Shout that. To John and Paul. That's because between both of them people you mentioned, they put the fucking work in. And let's be clear, put, not yes, you, John Webb I know. <laughs> I know. I'm just saying both of them people put the fucking work in. Mm -hmm. You got to start. You got to put your fucking foot in the sand and start somewhere and start putting the fucking work in. It don't ain't shit given to you in this world. You got to take everything in this world. You got to put your foot in the fucking ground and you got to start moving forward. All me personally, I I used to do all that what was me shit. I just stopped that shit. I just said fuck that shit. I, I had to throw that mentality out the fucking window. Window, put my foot in the ground. And any storm that fucking came my way, I had to battle fucking through it. Hey, I got bruised, dinged up, fucked up along the way. But once I got out of the storm, I felt so much better as a fucking person. I said I fucking battled it. I went through it. Yeah, it bruised me and scarred me the fuck up, but I got through it. I'm not dead. I'm still here. Let's keep it pushing. I'm hey, maybe I'm not at where I'm supposed to be at in my life. Who gives a fuck? May I yeah, I don't maybe I don't like my fucking job. I don't give a fuck. I got kids though. That's who I live my life through right now. I live my life through them. Anything I'm gonna fucking obtain in life, anything I'm gonna fucking put my shit my myself through in life is for them. I may have fucked off my first 20 years in life. I'm not going to fuck off whatever remaining I got on this earth to get them in a better situation. Yeah. That's how I got to look at it. Hey, I'm in a little midlife crisis right now because my midlife crisis is a little bit different. It's like, how much more time do I have on this fucking planet to accomplish this shit? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I got a son that's autistic, but he's working through it. He's getting better and shit like that in school. I just want to put him in a good position. I got a kid that's in college. I got one that's a little fuck up right now. He's doing some dumb shit. But I got to get him fucking on the straight and fucking narrow. That's what all I'm doing this for. I'm not doing this for nobody else. I, I, I don't fuck my time up. I'm cool where I'm at in life. Let me just get them through it. That's where I'm at. I, me personally, I'm cool in life. I'm cool who I, who I am. I'm cool where I'm at financially. I'm not cool where my kid's situation is, so I'm going to make this shit better. Me personally, that's how I'm in my so I'll let y'all speak. I was going to say, here, let me let me jump in there. So one of one of the things that the biggest thing that I'm worried about now, um, you know, I quit my job. I was making all right money at my job. I'm not going to sit here and lie. Um, I'm worried <laughs> that I might have made a mistake. And we, we don't have to we don't have to go into why I didn't make a mistake and all that. I'm just saying this is these are the things that are in my mind every day. Yeah. Worried that I made a mistake. Um, having trouble breaking into the industry that I want to break into, having trouble creating opportunities. Um, I, I didn't give up, but I'm having trouble creating opportunities, um, which is then putting a strain on my marriage, which is then 
you, you, it's a lot of shit, bro. It's a lot. That's that's fucking with me right now. That's making me go through my midlife crisis. And let's me be clear about what I feel about midlife crisis. Midlife crises. You go in on one side, you go through some rough shit, and you come out with a new perspective. In any situation, I don't care if it's death. I don't care what it is. Shit that happens is meant for you to gain a new perspective once you get out of it. So I know that. To me, when you're in the eye of the storm, which I'm not giving off, you know, in I'm not giving off stress. When you see me, I'm not telling you like, oh man, this is all. I'm just I'm getting through it on my own, trying to figure it out because I know that I I'm the one that has to do this. But that's the type of shit I'm going through. Did I make the wrong decision coming down here? Will I will I have to come back up to New Jersey? A failure. You know what I'm saying? Failure kind of goes over and over in my head. You know, do I have do I have the actual skill to do the things that I say I want to do? Is what I want to do going to work? You know what I mean? Why hasn't the things that I wanted to do in the past work? Like it's a lot of shit that's going into my head. It's really self doubt. So that's that's my um, midlife crisis that I'm dealing with. It's more self doubt. You know what I mean? And even listen. Even at certain times of being down here, you know, I mean, I'll be completely candid. That's that's what that's what I do. It's affected my life in the bedroom at a certain point where my confidence is like in the basement. And I'm like, all right, because my mind is on so much other shit. And I keep that. I try not to, you know, bombard her ears with the shit that I got going on, you know, in my head. But yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot of shit. It's about not being able to have kids and shit like that. Yeah, nigga, that shit, <laughs> all this shit is in my brain at one time. Can y'all see that? One time. So a lot of shit has fucked with me on a different level, more emotionally, more like it's a lot of other shit that people got it worse than me. So I know that I don't have it as bad. I'm just saying like, this is the eye of the storm that I'm in right now. That that's where midlife crisis has kind of affected me, and yeah, I'm calling it that, but I'm really just in a crisis right now that I'm trying to get myself through. That once I get to the other side, I know that I'm going to be way better. I'm going to have a weight. I'm going to know myself a lot more, and I'm going to be able to help people more than what I do right now. That's all I have for that. Go ahead, Kev. If you want, me it's more of. changing my habitual ways and trying to do stuff that I don't normally do. It's like me switching lanes and it's hard for me to get into a different lane. I'm used to driving on the same course on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's not something I want to do anymore, but it's hard for me to get into that other lane and start, you know, that push to move forward in that direction and especially with me creeping up on 40 i know that this isn't where i want to be or what i want to do so i'm trying to maneuver myself into this different path and my motivation lacks completely at this point but it it's the lack of everything to get to that point which kind of prevents me from like it just when it's time for me to get something done to get to that next lane it's like man fuck that i just i'm either tired and i don't feel like going through the bullshit or there's other things that i might indulge my time with instead of making the sacrifice that i know i should make or you know what i mean it's just my mind can't, my mind always takes over my heart, if that makes any sense. Like, I know in my heart that this is what I want to do and this is what's going to help me get better somewhere mentally, but mentally, it's like, nah, it's not going to happen, son. And I don't know how to break that. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what people tell me when it gets to that point. 
my mind, it's like something just takes over and be like, yo, that's not happening, son. And I don't know why. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Self-doubt is what I think we're all referring to. Except for Kev. Kev's good with everything. I think you can I'm go deeper, Kev. I'm going to be honest. I think you can go deeper. And, yeah, and I'm not trying to like oh, diminish what you said. I just think you can go deeper. Well, yeah, I mean, he had his 10 years ago, so months. he's coming oh, out yeah, of it. I had months. I hit that In a sense. I, I mean, I, I look at Kevin, I see the things that he goes through, like how he can put himself in a lane and be like, yo, I need to do this, and this is what's going to get done, and I'm going to give fuck. I don't have that, and I know it. You know what I'm saying? Like, little shit like, all right, you got to clean up. You got to clean up. I got to go buy groceries. I got to go buy groceries. There's a different dedication that Kev puts himself to, and and that I don't have. It's a different drive between the two of us. You know what I mean? Where Kev will be like, oh, this is what needs to get done. It doesn't have to be done, but I'm going to do it anyway. If it don't have to be done at that point, there's so many other things that I could be doing. I'm going to do those instead of what doesn't have to be done. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have seen Kev put on fucking roofs. I mean, bro. Tiles. Bro. All this crazy shit. Line, and I'm bro. Like, yeah, nah. <laughs> bro, I've seen this nigga cutting a 40-foot tree. Yeah, he's... Yeah. Let me, let Yo, me, I'm going to rent a... Wait, hold on. He in the neighborhood, neighborhood lumberjack. I was about to say. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and rent the... What that, what's that shit? I'm going to rent me a scissor uh, lift and uh, like just no, regular shit to him. It's like, yeah, bro, I had- no. Because I had to do it, y'all understand, bro. That's what I'm. But that but ten, that's, ten, ten years, ten years ago, ten years ago, real shit. Ten years ago, I was questioning myself at every fucking waking moment, questioning everything. Maybe why the reason I lost my hair. Maybe the reason okay. I got this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's I got these. I'm all, losing mine now. Yeah, maybe this is the reason yeah. I got all these fucking grays in my beard. I question everything, and I try to do it. Everything at once because everything was heading in the wrong direction. Damn. And like I said, I hit literally, I hit, y'all don't understand. I literally hit fucking rock bottom. I'm not lying when I said I wanted to kill myself. I literally sat in the room with a gun on my lap. With a gun on my lap, looking at the motherfucker, staring at it. And then something said, my kids and I realized how important I only had care. Y'all know I'm a single single parent father. I said, what the fuck she going to go through? This is this is the same thought process I had when I almost had to murder a nigga. This is the same thought process. I had the same thing. Both of them the same thing. She's gonna hate me for doing this. Is she gonna miss me? Is she gonna be mad at me? Who's gonna take care of her? All this shit. They both synced up with each other. And in that that very moment, in that, in that fucking crisis I was having, I start channeling my shit to what can I focus on now and start fucking doing it. That's good advice. And I, and I did it. And I accomplished what everything I set my fucking brain to, I accomplished. Shit I couldn't, shit I couldn't fix or switch or change up. No matter how many times I fucking kept going at it, I didn't get upset. I didn't blame myself. I said this ain't just, just... This ain't for me. This ain't for me. I'm trying to fucking fit a fucking square peg into a round fucking hole. This ain't for me. You got to go. Go ahead. Then when I let it the fuck go, I felt a lot better. I said, oh, okay, cool. I had all them fucking problems. I just kept... That's how I live life now. I live life now. I got... Oh, I got shit fucking with me right now. I got shit coming at me at a thousand miles an hour. Hmm. I just fucking just step back, attack it. Attack the one fucking thing. Slay that demon. Go to the next one. Slay, slay, slay. Oh, I get fucked. I really get fucked up along. I get fucked up along the way. Don't get it twisted. I get fucked up along the way. You mean drinking? Yeah. But then I come (laughs) out, I'm like, ah. (laughs) Right now, like right now, like I said, right now I know I got to talk to that therapist. I know I got to talk to her. And I know why I got to talk to her. We all do. But I know what I got to talk to her for. Because that fucking monkey is on my back heavy. And I got to get it off my shit. I got to get it. When I talked to her that f- couple of seconds, I felt another fucking like, Ooh, you're mm. off my back a little bit. Got to get you completely off of there. That's why I say, y'all will, 
listen to me. I'm y'all say I'm older than y'all. I am older than y'all by a little bit, maybe because I got kids. Y'all ain't fucking hit rock bottom yet. You know when you you're going to hit it. You have to hit it. Everybody in their life has to hit it. Even businessmen, everybody that's successful hit rock fucking bottom. Everybody's successful. Listen to all their stories. Anybody that got that came in the wealth, they hit bottom. Yeah. When you hit that, you don't look. There's nowhere other. There's no. You can't go no further down. There's nowhere else to fucking go but up, or you fucking land and you die. That's the choice you're going to make. Are you going to sit here and die, or are you going to fucking start climbing your way out of this fucking hole you put yourself into? Y'all ain't hit it yet. I hate when y'all hit it, but you're going to hit it. And when you do, and if y'all strong enough to come the fuck out of it, y'all will be better men for it. That's the one thing I tell myself, and I think you said, I think you put that great, bro. Like what you just said was amazing. Yeah, I think with with that, I try to tell myself that all the time. Listen, right now. I'm still as blessed as I possibly can be. Like I, I'm, I'm great. Like you know, what I'm saying like the shit I'm dealing with is more mental and and shit like that. Like basically getting in my own way. Like it's me. It's nobody else. It's nobody else. It's me. Yeah, for sure. I try to tell myself that I'm not a weak man. I am strong. I'm not a dumb man. I'm smart. Sounds stupid to say, but that's that's what I tell myself because sometimes you you start to say like, yo, am I fucking stupid or something? Like, what am I not getting? Um, I try to tell myself these things as affirmations, like in all honesty, to to you know to to like you just said, like if you're strong, you are gonna bounce back. And I try to tell myself that like, nah, bro, I'm I'm strong. I'm one of the strongest people. I, I would say that I know that's not true, but you know what I mean. Like, I'm I'm one of the strongest people that I know. You know, is, is is what I say. I know stronger people, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. It so motivation. Tell myself, yeah, like you try to tell yourself that at your lowest point. The one thing I try to tell myself, period, though, is that I am blessed. There's a bum on the street. Listen, I ain't got. I got zero dollars. I got a wife, luckily, that works. Um, if I got zero dollars in my account, though, if I see a bum on the street begging for money. I'm better off than him. Like, you get what I'm saying? I'm not so I, I will always tell myself, like, nah, nigga, I'm really, you know what I'm saying? Like, you go like this, though. You know what I'm saying? But I think you hit the nail on the head with what you just said, bro. I think yeah, that's, yeah, like, that's a good way to leave it. Uh, we, we out of this motherfucker then, man. I love y'all guys as always. I'm going to tell you, I love y'all. Love you too, man. Love I love too, y'all. Yeah, love both of y'all niggas. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, bro, real, this is no podcast shit, but I love y'all niggas. Y'all get through it. Once y'all hit rock bottom, holla at the nigga. You don't know when you hit it. Don't fucking take the coward way out. Start looking up, dog. I love y'all. That's how I'm ending the podcast. We out. Peace. Wow, man, you had it. I thought he had it.